Hey guys, welcome to the Doula Diaries. I'm Heidi. I'm the host of the Birth Story Podcast, which drops birth story episodes and expert interviews every Thursday. I'm also the author of the Birth Story Pregnancy Guidebook and Journal. It is everything, 529 pages of everything that you need to know to prepare for your birth. You can get that at birthstory.com. And I am also the content creator for Birth Story Academy, where you go for online learning from a virtual doula. You can also get into my private Facebook community through Birth Story Academy. And here on Tuesdays is where we meet for doula diaries. So welcome. Episode two. All right. So today we're going to talk about vaginal discharge, just what you wanted to hear about, but really why it's so important and how to understand how it could mean that you might be going into labor soon and then pooping. Or maybe we'll talk about pooping and then vaginal discharge. I'm not really sure, but I have to tell you a story about when I got pooped on once as a doula. So here it goes. But before we get started... How's your week going? I just got off the Peloton. I did three rides with Jess King today. And by three rides, I mean like a warm up, a ride, and then like a cool down and maybe like a stretch. So actually like four. But what was really surprising to me is when I looked back on the calendar, I haven't done a Peloton workout in eight weeks. And I was really confused by this because in my mind, I work out twice a week. Like if my doctor were to say, how often do you work out? I would be like, for sure, twice a week. Now, I do things like walking and yoga and I ride bikes outside. So it's not like I haven't moved my body at all. But it was really surprising how eight weeks can just sneak up on you. And now we're into the holidays. Like it's the week before Thanksgiving. And I just wanted to come on here and remind myself and remind each of you that it's really important in this holiday season when especially we're getting together with family and germs and COVID and all of the anxiety just starts to just envelop us and creep in. And I just want to remind you to do something for yourself. Like don't let eight weeks go by and not get on your favorite thing called a Peloton or your yoga class or whatever it is. Because the last couple of weeks, I noticed my mood was really foul. I was super snappy at people. You know, it just, it just wasn't pretty. You guys know, it just wasn't pretty. And so I was like, oh, this is directly correlated to the fact that I haven't been on the dang bike in eight weeks. So do that hard thing today. Will you? Like, has it been on your mind to like get to that yoga class or to put your Peloton app in your ears and go for a walk? Like, I swear this isn't sponsored by Peloton, y'all. This is just like, I love Peloton, okay? But like, do that thing that feels really hard, even if you do it for five minutes. I just want to encourage you to do something. Do something for yourself today. Okay, now pooping and vaginal discharge. Ready? If you have a book and you want to follow along, I am working on the pop out from page 70 on vaginal discharge. Okay. And so throughout the birth story pregnancy guidebook and journal, you'll see these pop outs. And these are teachable moments within the birth stories from a doula that help you learn organically. So what I talk about is that Almost all, like no all, but almost all of my clients call me at the end of their pregnancy. This literally happened this morning. Hi, Nicole. She was concerned that like maybe something was going on, right? Like everyone's like, did my water break? And do, or what is this? What's going on? My underwear are wet, okay? So right before you go into labor, a couple of things happen, right? That as your doula, I'm like, oh yeah, over communicate, tell me all the things because I start getting a timeline of when I think you might 
go into your birthing time or into your labor. So one of those things are gushes of vaginal fluid. So just increases in vaginal fluid. So really my clients get kind of scared. They're like, oh, like did my water break? Is it leaking? Um, Or is this just normal vaginal discharge? Okay. So this is how I'm going to doula you into this. If you think your water has broken, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to take your underwear off and I want you to lay down. Lay down for like five minutes. Then I want you to stand up. What happens? Then I want you to lay down again. Stand up. I want you to like shake to the left, shake to the right. If your amniotic fluid is leaking out of you, it should keep leaking out of you, even if it's like a little high tear, meaning like a tear at the top of the sac, and it's just kind of spilling over as you move. So that makes sense, right? If you lay down, it would spill out the top of that sac, and then you stand up, and it would leak around the baby's head and come out. And so it would leak down to your knee or your ankle. If you have vaginal fluid or vaginal discharge, it tends to stay around your vagina and like maybe your upper thighs. So it can still be really clear and liquidy, just like seemingly like amniotic fluid, but it ha- it's a little bit more dense. So vaginal discharge is a little bit more dense. It doesn't leak down to your um, knee. Vaginal discharge doesn't leak down to your ankle. Amniotic fluid does. Now, can vaginal discharge pull in your underwear and get your underwear soaking wet, especially after a good night's sleep? Yeah, absolutely. So a couple of things, go to the bathroom and empty your bladder because it could also be urine leakage. And this confuses everyone. People are like, I didn't pee my pants. And I'm like, okay, okay, I get it. You did not pee your pants. But what may have happened is urine may have gotten trapped in the urethra because the head is so low, it kind of like pinches it, you know? So you think you've emptied your bladder and then that head wiggles down there and like cuts it off. And then when you stand up, the urine that's trapped in the urethra then kind of dribbles out. And now you have wet underwear and you're like, oh my gosh, did I pee my pants? Did my water break? Is this vaginal fluid? So I mean, smell your underwear because we all know what urine smells like. We all might know what vaginal discharge smells like. It's different. And then amniotic fluid is like a very sweet smell. Some people describe it like walking out on the beach into the ocean. Like it's a very like crisp, clean, sweet. It is a very distinct smell that's like more pleasurable than like, let's say vaginal discharge or urine, which tends to be a little bit more like acrid, like ammonia kind of smelling. So does that help you guys? I really want you to know that if you have these gushes of vaginal fluid though, and it's not going down to your knee or an ankle or continuing to come, it's a really good sign, especially if you're in your like 40th week or 41st week of pregnancy that like your baby could be coming soon. This could be one of those warning signs. Okay. So Things to look for are, and things to know are the differences between the amniotic fluid, the urine, and the vaginal fluid. So I'm here to drill at home that it's really, really normal to get like vaginal discharge that's a lot in your underwear and kind of up at your upper thighs, right? So everybody knows you've got a plan. If you're confused, right, we're going to take our underwear off. We're going to walk around, we're going to squat, we're going to get on the toilet and empty our bladder, we're going to lay down, we're going to stand up, and we're going to see if that fluid leaks out around the baby's head and kind of dribbles down to our knee or ankle. Now, sometimes your amniotic fluid just gushes out of you, it's Niagara Falls, there's like no question about it. So the type of amniotic fluid I'm talking about is called like a high tear or a high leak or Newsflash, there's two sacs. There's an inner and an outer, an amnion and a chorion. And so like there's some fluid in between those two sacs too. So if you have like just a little tear on the outside, some fluid will leak out, but it really, you still have a four bag intact. So really your water isn't broken at that point. So we really want you to know, I really want you to know 
that it's super normal to have a lot of discharge, to have to change your underwear a couple times a day at the end, and that it could be a little urine leakage. It could be just increases in vaginal fluid, but like it's a little bit more obvious when it's your amniotic fluid going down to your knee or your ankle. Okay, we all square because that's the number one thing that gets me awakened at 2 a.m. is like, oh my gosh, Heidi, I think my water broke. And we're like, well, actually my work partner, Colin, works the night shift, but you know, theoretically over the last 17 years, I did take that call and Colin would appreciate the shout out today, but Colin takes that call at night now. But like, this is what wakes up your doulas in the middle of the night. So it's really important we start this education now. Okay. The other thing that everyone is super worried about is pooping. But pooping is so, it's normal and it's a warning sign and you're probably not going to poop all over the table when you're pushing. Like maybe like a tiny nugget or something, okay? Like not a lot, but let's, let's get into this, okay? Another warning sign. My text messages are filled. Hey, Heidi, I don't know what's going on, man, but I've like had diarrhea, soft stool, like four times a day for the last three days. Me, as your doula, I'm like, yes, that baby is coming, okay? That colon starts to vibrate, that uterus starts to contract, like things get moot, prostaglandins get released, and your bowels get moving. So right before my clients go into labor, they are self-cleansing, right? Like those bowels are getting cleaned out and they're telling me like, I've never pooped so much in my life. Like Heidi, I poop once a day in the morning, all the time, every day. And I've pooped four times today. I'm like, yes, you are going into labor tonight or tomorrow or the next something soon, right? Like this is a warning sign. And then every now and then there's like a little left over or like maybe you have a really long labor. Like you may poop when you're pushing. Okay. If you poop when you're pushing, that honestly means that you're kind of pushing correctly or the head is pushing down on your colon and it's literally pushing out like farts and poop without your permission. And you'll just be like laying there and like farts are just like... And moms are like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, what are you sorry about? Like, that's your body. That's your baby actually's head pushing air out, okay? So sometimes a little poop might come out, like, I mean, like a little bit. But if you have a good OB, a good doula, a good midwife, we're just going to either, like, if you're in the birthing tub, we're just going to, like, scoop it out. If you're um, in the bed on all fours, we'll have, like, a bath cloth. We just wipe it away. This is what essential oils are for, y'all. Like we'll be just like sprinkling you with a little lavender, a little clary sage, maybe a drop of peppermint, you know, just something to kind of um, so that you're not feeling insecure about pooping because we want you to keep doing the job at hand. So now I have a story for you, a like a veteran doula yet rookie story. So a couple of months ago, so I want you to hear that again. So just a couple of months ago, 17 years into my career, I am laboring with my one of my clients, let's just call her Susie. And Susie is amazing. She's so funny. We're having the best birth. We're laughing. She's unmedicated. She's moving her body all around. And she's on her hands and knees. And she's like, I think labor is progressing really quick. And I'm like, take a selfie with me. And I do this because if you can look at the camera when we take a selfie, like you're not in transition or labor land. But if I take a selfie with you and your eyes are like cross-eyed, one's looking forward, one's looking to the side, you're like nowhere near the camera. I'm like, oh yeah, she's in labor land, right? So I asked Suze to take a picture with me and she's like, can't focus on the camera at all. It's hysterical. And um, her signs and her sounds just start to grow pretty rapidly. Okay. So she had this long ramp up to her labor and then this really quick transition kind of surprised all of us. So the doctor comes in the room, she's on her hands and knees checks her and she's like fetal ejection reflex which we talked about last week 
kicks in and she like starts to push and you know it's the joke everyone's like wait 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 and we're because no one's ready right like there's not a single person in the room the cart's not set up it's like that's not her problem that's not her doula's problem That's not, I don't know whose problem it is, but like if the hospital is not ready for your impending birth, like 12 hours after you've been there, like, I don't know. So Susie turns a corner like pretty quick and everyone leaves the room because they have to go, I guess, get the things that you need to deliver a baby. So I'm in there with her and her husband and I'm like, get off this bed. You need to do some squats. Oh, rookie move, y'all. So she's doing these squats, deep squats during the contractions, which we know she's complete and she has the fetal ejection reflex. So, you know, honestly, we're just going with it. And all of a sudden she's like, Heidi, like I really feel like the baby is coming. And I'm like, well, great. No one's in the room. Like, hold on a second. Let me just get my camera out. Um, so I get my, ca- my phone out and I turn on the camera cause I'm like, and I don't know what I'm thinking in my mind. Let me just confirm that like, if there is a head hanging out of your vagina, like we need to go screaming down the hallway. Right. So I, she's in a deep squat. So I lay on the hospital floor. Yes. In COVID. I love my clients very much. I lay on that COVID floor. And I turn that flashlight on and I put it on her vagina and I do see the head kind of peeking out (laughs) for labias. And just as I'm about to get up and go into the hallway to scream, I find myself that I am getting shit on. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm so dumb. (laughs) Like she... So there's now poop all over my face and she's thankfully facing, you know, we're, I'm not facing each other. So she can't see me with poop face, but like her husband sees me with poop face and I'm giving him the like, you know, hand across the throat. Like, don't say anything. Do not say anything. And I'm like, go just go get help. Like tell them the baby's coming. And then I'm like running to the bathroom to try to like wipe poop off of my face And the whole time thinking like, Heidi, you know that sometimes poop comes out when people are pushing effectively. And I laid underneath a mom with my face while she was pushing. (laughs) I mean, you're one of doula. I, I could have accepted this, but I just can't believe I did that on year 17. So anyway, so I got pooped on. I wiped my face off. <laughs> we had the delivery and I have since told her and we laughed about it and it's not her fault. It's my fault. But the point was, is there wasn't a lot of poop on my face, right? It was just like a little bit. That's the whole point to all of this. You guys, it's a funny story, but like you're probably going to clean your bowels out before you go into labor. And then if you poop at all, it's like a tiny little bit. It's like not a big deal, right? Like there wasn't a load on my face. It was just like a little smears of poops around my forehead and face and cheek. So hopefully you learned something today in doula diaries about vaginal discharge and pooping. And if you're a doula, I hope you learned don't crawl underneath your clients while they're pushing, please. See episode one on the fetal ejection (laughs) reflex. All right. There's a great birth story coming out on Thursday. And until then, and until next week, see me here Tuesday for Doula Diaries. Stick around for a minute, and I'm going to read a postcard from the womb. Okay, thanks for letting me interrupt this episode for just a quick minute with some reminders. One, Birth Story Academy is launching on February 1st, 2022, but pre-sales start on December 1st, 2021. So if you are listening in that window, I am offering 50% off to my loyal podcast listeners with code BIRTHSTORYPODCAST. Second reminder, just click on birthstory.com, go to the workbook, type in your email address. It unlocks an entire library of all of my free resources. So if you want to learn more about placenta encapsulation, delayed cord clamping, have birth plan templates, like 
whatever your heart desires, I probably have written a guide for it. My latest guides are on postpartum recovery and breastfeeding. So I hope you will check out all those free resources at birthstory.com. And last but not least, if you want to go the extra mile, I would love it if you would push pause and leave a review and then click the icon that says share and send the podcast or a favorite episode to someone that you know who is pregnant, trying to become pregnant, loves birth stories, or that would really enjoy the birth story podcast. The only way people learn about this is through word of mouth and referral. So I love those reviews and those shares, and I appreciate you so much. So let's get back to this episode. Postcards from the Womb, Pregnancy Week 5. Again, this is LMP for Last Menstrual Period, Week 5. Dear Mom, I know you may be in denial, but I am really here. I'm growing and changing, and I know you are too. Have you taken a pregnancy test yet? It may confirm what you are feeling. I'm so ready for you to know that I am here. I am very, very small, only half an inch long. My placenta is forming, and believe it or not, my skeleton is starting to form. Thank you for growing me inside of you. Every time you feel sick, just know I'm on my way. It will get better. Also, You aren't alone, mom. About 70% of all pregnant women develop morning sickness. While folic acid intake was imperative before I was even conceived, it continues to be vital. Make sure to supplement 400 micrograms of folic acid in your diet every day throughout your pregnancy. I need it for my brain and spinal cord. I have a head and a tail, and I look like a tadpole inside of you. You can totally see me in an ultrasound, and I am so cute. I give you permission to sleep all day and miss a few days of work. The overwhelming fatigue is indescribable. I bet you feel like you couldn't stay awake even if your life depended on it. But I believe in you. Love. Me, your baby, a.k.a. the butterflies in your stomach. P.S. You are smart. You are beautiful. You are strong. You are my mom. Hey guys, a quick disclaimer from postcards from the womb that you just heard. You may have noticed a couple of things. There was a wild generalization in the literary writing of postcards from the womb. And so I want to put out this disclaimer to acknowledge that this is not inclusive language. I am a supporter, an ally, and I'm adjacent to the LGBTQIA plus community. The language that I chose was based on a cisgendered, heterosexual couple carrying a single fetus pregnancy that was conceived spontaneously after a last menstrual period. Now, how many people we know, do we know that that's actually their story? Not that many. So I want you to know that if you are in a same-sex assigned at birth relationship, if you're in a same gendered relationship, if you are a single parent, if you struggled with fertility and didn't have a last menstrual period and utilized IVF or IUI for conception, whatever your story is. I see you and I don't want you to feel excluded. I wanted to make sure I let you know my reasoning behind the language that I used in postcards from the womb. I welcome your feedback at Birth Story Podcast 